Hi, today we're going to look at uh, Dinosaurs Before Dark, chapters 6 and 7, okay? So in chapters 1 to 5, Jack and Annie found the magic trios, they went back in time, they met a Pteranodon, they saw a Triceratops, and Jack. Jack found a me medallion with an M on it, and so he's like, oh, we're not the first ones to, to see these dinosaurs, okay? Because he found something a person made. And uh, let's see what happens next, okay? So chapter six, Dinosaur Valley. Dinosaur Dinosaur Valley. Valley. Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. She was busy picking a flower from the magnolia tree. Annie, look, a medallion. But Annie wasn't paying attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh, wow, she said. Annie! Clutching her magnolia flower, flower, she took off down the hill. Annie always running places. Okay? Annie, come back, Jack shouted. But Annie had disappeared. Oh, I'm going to kill her, Jack muttered. He stuffed the, gold, the gold medallion into his jeans pocket. <laughs> then he heard Annie shriek. Ah! Annie? Jack heard another sound as well, a deep bellowing sound like a tuba. Jack, come here, Annie called. Annie! Jack grabbed his backpack and raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. The valley below was filled with nests, big nests made out of mud, and the nests were filled with tiny dinosaurs. Okay. Tiny dinosaurs. Maybe not a safe place. Annie was crouching next to one of the nests, and standing over her was a gigantic duck-billed dinosaur. Don't panic, don't move, said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill toward Annie. The huge dinosaur was towering above Annie, waving her arms, making her tuba sound. Not happy with Annie. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move toward me. Slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand. Crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled toward Jack. The duck-billed dinosaur followed her, still bellowing. Roar, roar. Annie froze. Big dinosaur. Keep going, Jack said softly. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched farther down the hill, slowly, slowly moving, inched, okay, until he was just an arm's distance from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, he said. He crouched next to her. Next to her. Bow your head. Pretend to chew. Chew? Yes, I read that's what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's no dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. Soon the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack raised his head. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. Thanks, Jack, for saving me, said Annie. You have to use your brain, said Jack. You can't just go running to a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. Annie stood up. Annie! Too late. Annie held out her magnolia flower to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your babies, she said. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her. She reached for another. No more, said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. Mom. But there are some flowers up there, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Jack quickly examined the babies. Some were crawling out of their nests. Where were the other mothers? Jack took out the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a picture of some duck-billed dinosaurs. He read the, the caption. The Anas Anatosauruses lived in colonies. The Anatosauruses lived in colonies while a few mothers babysat the nests, others hunted for food. 
So there must be more mothers close by. Hey, Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding magnolia flowers to the giant Anatosaurus. She's nice too, Jack, Annie said. But suddenly the Anatosaurus made her, uh, made her terrible tuba sound. Oh! Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur barged down the hill. Dong, 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 dong. She seemed afraid of something. Jack put the book down on top of his pack. He hurried up to Annie. I wonder why she ran away, said Annie. We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him throw up. An enormous ugly monster was coming across the plain. He was walking on two big legs and swinging a long thick tail and dangling two tiny arms. He had a huge head and his jaws were wide open. Even from far away, Jack could see his long, gleaming teeth. Tyrannosaurus Rex, whispered Jack. Chapter 7, Ready, Set, Go. Tyrannosaurus Rex, these dinosaurs do not eat plants, okay? They eat people. Run, Annie, run, cried Jack, to the treehouse. They dashed down the hill together through the tall grass, through the ferns, past the pteranodon, and right to the rope ladder. They scrambled up. Seconds later, they tumbled into the treehouse. Annie leaped to the window. He's going away, she said, panting. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He looked through the window with her. The Tyrannosaurus was wandering off. But then the monster stopped and turned around. Duck, said Jack. The two of them hunched down. After a long moment, they raised their heads. They peeked out again. Coast clear, said Jack. Yeah, whispered Annie. We have to get out of here, said Jack. You made a wish before, said Annie. I wish we could go back to Frog Creek, said Jack. Nothing happened. I wish. Wait, you were looking at a, at a picture in the dinosaur book, remember? The dinosaur book. Jack groaned. Oh, no. I left the book and my pack on the hill. I have to go back. Oh, forget it, said Annie. I can, said Jack. The book doesn't belong to us. Plus, my notebook's in my pack with all my notes. Hurry, said Annie. Jack hurried down the rope ladder. He leaped to the ground. He raced past the pteranodon, through the ferns, through the tall grass, and up the hill. He looked down. There was his pack lying on the ground. On top of it was the dinosaur book. But now the valley below was filled with anatosauruses, all standing guard around the nests. Where had they been? Did fear of the Tyrannosaurus send them home? Jack took a deep breath. <sighs> Ready, set, go! He charged down the hill. He leaped to his backpack. He scooped it up. He grabbed the dinosaur book. A terrible tuba sound. Arr! Another, another, ah, ah. All their natosauruses were bellowing at him. Jack took off. He raced up to the hilltop. He started down the hill. He stopped. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was back, and he was standing between Jack and the treehouse. And the treehouse is over here somewhere. Chapter 8, A Giant Shadow. We'll read this next time. Bye-bye.